Hopefully you've read the, the notes for 3.1 and that you've also watched the other video up till minute six that reviews how to use the power rule. So I'm gonna do an example from the homework using the power rule along with our addition rule to find the derivative of, um, of a function and then apply that derivative to finding the tangent line. We are gonna do a lot more with tangent lines as well when we get into 3.10. So this is just kind of an introduction. The first thing we want to do is kind of remember we have two different notations for derivatives. This is from section um, 2.4. We have what's called the, the Leibniz notation where we write it almost like a fraction. So d dx means take the derivative with respect to x of xn. And then we have this power rule back from chapter 2 that said I could find the derivative quickly by basically having the exponent falls in front. And the way I think of it is he's so tired now he loses 1. Right, and this is, this is a way to get the derivative quickly without using the actual limit definition. So as we go through chapter three, we're gonna learn lots of rules for lots of different functions so that we can quickly find derivatives without having to go back to that limit definition. But we will now always remember that what this new function means is that instantaneous rate of change. Putting that power rule together with our new rule that we saw in 3.1, which mm -hmm. tells us that if we take the derivative of a sum of two functions, that, that that is the sum of the derivative. So if I have two functions that I'm adding together and I want the derivative of their sum, I take the derivative of the first function. Remember, this is a review of our other notation, f prime of x, over the function x, and then add it to the derivative of the second function. So that would be over here. So g prime of x being the derivative of the second function. So putting those two things together, we can go ahead and find derivatives of some more complicated functions quickly using these rules. And then I'm gonna use the derivative to find the equation of the tangent line. So let's sort of set the problem up so we know what we're talking about. Here is we want the equation of the tangent line at the point x equals two of the function. You don't have to draw a picture to do these problems. I just included a picture so we can understand what we're talking about. We're looking at a picture of the function x cubed over 2 minus 4 over 3x. Notice if x is 0, this function is undefined, so there is an asymptote at the y-axis. And what I'm really interested in is the equation of the tangent line right here at x equals 2. So I want to find the equation of that line. I can already observe from the graph. Let's jot down some things that we already noticed before we get started so we can kind of check our work. This line is increasing. So that tells me that the slope should be positive. So I can make sure I have a positive slope. I also know that since that line is tangent to the function, the point two, f of two, has to be on my line. Because that's what it means to be tangent is the point is both on the function f of x and on the line. So let's plug two into our function to find out what that y value is. If I put two in for x, I'm going to get 2 cubed is 8 over 2 minus 4 over 3 times 2, which is 6, which gives me 4 minus 2 thirds, which should be 3 and 1 third or 10 thirds. So the point 2, I'm going to write it as an improper fraction because that's actually easier to work with. 2 comma 10 thirds is going to be on the graph. So the other thing we want to think about is if we remember from algebra, I can find the equation of a line using point slope form if all I have is a point and a slope. So I'm gonna find the equation of my line, let's call that y. So the point slope form is gonna be my y coordinate, which in this case would be f of two, because I'm finding the tangent at the point two. That's gonna give me the y value, which we found to be 10 thirds, plus the slope times x minus the x value. This is a formula we already had from algebra. Now we know how to find the point because I just plug in the given x value and find the y value and that point will be on the line the same as it's on the function. The question is, how can I find the slope? So that's when we remember we defined the instantaneous rate of change, the slope of a function at a point as the derivative. So the derivative at two, we're talking about the very specific derivative at a point is gonna be the slope of my line. So let's go ahead and start now that we've kind of broken down the problem. So we'll write the problem fresh for ourselves. So sort of going through the steps.
step one, we're going to find f of 2 in this case. In general, you'd find f of a. So going through that again, we figured out that that was, we can kind of go through the steps again, double check our work, 8 over 2 minus 4 over 6, substituting 2 in for x, which was 4 minus 2 thirds, which is 3 and 1 third, which if I rewrite that as an improper fraction is 10 thirds. And the second thing is now we need to find the derivative at 2. That is going to be the slope of the line. And then the third, I'm going to plug that into point slope form. So I'm going to plug that into the equation that y equals f of 2 plus m, which we now know to be the derivative, times x minus 2. So I already found f of 2 to be 10 thirds. So now what I need to do is find f prime of 2, because that will be my slope. So let's go ahead and look at that. So I'm going to write down some steps again for us. Whoops. Um, or not. So if I'm trying to find the derivative of a function like this that doesn't already look like the form x to the n, my first step is to rewrite everything as an exponent, rewrite everything with exponential notation. So how do we do that? Hopefully we remember the rules. If I have something that looks like 1 over x to the n, I can rewrite that as x to the negative n. And if we have things that look like the nth root of x to the m, that becomes x to the m over n. So using those two exponent rules from algebra, I can rewrite some functions so they look like exponents, and then I can use that power rule to make my life easy. So let me recopy our problem again here so we can see it. So where we can actually read it. So my goal here is to find the first derivative because that will be the slope of the tangent line. Everything doesn't look exactly the way I want, to, want it to, so my first step is just to rewrite it. So this is still just f of x. Instead of divide by 2, I'm going to write that as times 1 half because that's just going to make it easier for me to take the derivative and apply those rules that I just multiply my answer by the constant. And I'm not going to be confused by a 2 in the denominator. Same thing here, I'm going to break this fraction up. Instead of 4 over 3x, I'm going to write that as 4 thirds times 1 over x. Now it's a little bit easier for me to see that I can write this as 4 thirds times x to the negative 1. Now everything is in the format of a constant times x to the n, and I'm just adding those things together. So to take the derivative, we remember from reading in the beginning of 3.1, if I have a constant like in this case, 1 half times x to the third to take the derivative, I'm just going to multiply that 1 half by my answer. So I keep the 1 half. Now I want the derivative of x to the third. The 3 falls in front and it loses 1. So what I've done in red is the derivative of x to the third. Our new rule that we know now is if I'm adding these two terms together, for the derivative, I just take the derivatives and add them together. So I still have a minus, 4 thirds is a constant, so I'm going to keep the 4 thirds. And then I'm going to multiply that answer by the derivative of my x to the negative 1. So the negative 1 falls in front, and then it loses 1. Negative 1 minus 1 would be negative 2. So that would be my derivative formula in terms of x. Let's try and make that look a little bit prettier. So if I want to make this look a little bit prettier, I'm going to write this as 3 halves x squared minus times minus is plus 1 times 4 thirds is 4 thirds. And instead of x to the negative 2, I'm going to write that as over x squared because I think it's going to be a little bit easier to evaluate. This is definitely not my slope. This is a formula to find the derivative at any point. The slope of the tangent line I'm looking for will be the value of this derivative at exactly 2. So now I'm going to plug 2 in for x. So that's 3 over 2 times 2 squared, which is 4, plus 4 over 3 times 2 squared, which would be 4. I can do some reducing here, and I'm going to end up getting 6 plus 1 third, which is 6 and a third, or 19 thirds, if I want to write it as an improper fraction. So putting it all together, we have that the value at 2 was 10 thirds. The derivative at 2 
we now know to be 19 thirds. So the tangent line is going to have my y sub 0, that's the y coordinate, 10 thirds, plus the slope, which would be the value of the derivative, which is 19 thirds, times x minus my x coordinate, which is 2. And then if you wanted to distribute and combine like terms, you certainly could. But this is ultimately your equation of the tangent line. So this is a way we can use those shortcut rules to quickly find derivatives of much more complicated functions and then use those derivatives to do other things.